Hi there! In this screencast we'll have a look at the .cover console runner, which we can for example use to run unit tests with code coverage in a continuous integration scenario. We'll first explore the console runner's options and then see how we can use it in TeamCity. The .cover console runner can be downloaded from our websites. The download is a zip file which contains the console runner and all of its dependencies. We can also get a .cover console runner from within Visual Studio. All we have to do is go to the options, click .cover, remote coverage and then get the server package. This will also generate a file which contains the console runner and everything we need to run it on our system. The console runner accepts several commands, which we can see by running .cover help. We can cover an application, merge snapshots, create an XML report of coverage results, list and delete snapshots, compress them or just run them all using the analyze command. Every command takes an XML configuration file that instructs .cover on which assembly to run and which assemblies to calculate coverage for. .cover can generate such an XML configuration file for us using the help analyze command. Now let's have a look at this file. We need to provide values for at least four elements. Executable, arguments, working directory and outputs. Just like in the .cover UI, we can specify filters here as well. Filters will give us the option of hiding coverage information for certain assemblies or namespaces or even specific classes that we are not interested in. Now to make the demo a little bit more swift, I already created such an XML configuration file. For executable, I'm specifying I want to use the XUnit console runner. This executable will then be run and analyzed by .cover. For arguments, I have to specify the arguments I would normally pass to the test runner, in this case a test assembly path. For working directory, I'm specifying the test assembly folder. The output element is the file in which code coverage information will be written. We can now run coverage using the .cover analyze command, passing in our configuration file as a parameter. Once the run has completed, we should have an XML file containing coverage information. We can also use the .cover report command to generate the report as HTML or JSON. Or we can simply go into our configuration file and edit it and make sure that the report type is set to HTML instead of XML. Now let's run code coverage again, passing in our updated configuration file. This will again generate a code coverage report for us, only this time it will be nicely formatted in HTML. We can open it in our browser and navigate through the results. Both the XML report as well as the HTML report can be shared with team members. We could run this command on a CI server as well, making code coverage information readily available for team members, which is exactly what we'll be doing next. On Team City, running .cover to capture code coverage information during unit test execution is quite straightforward. TeamCity comes with a bundled version of .cover as well as build step support for NUnit and MS tests. From the build configuration, we can add a new build step. Depending on the test framework you are using, the type of build step to use will be different. If we add NUnit for example, we can select to collect code coverage information using the bundled.cover executable. In the project I have here, we are using XUnit as a test runner. We can add a .NET process runner build step and then configure it to run XUnit and capture code coverage information. First, we have to specify the path to where XUnit is located. We also have to specify the arguments, which in this case would be the path to the test assembly that I want to run. Near the bottom of the page, we can select .cover as the code coverage tool. TeamCity supports other code coverage tools as well, but remember it has .cover bundled. We can specify some advanced options like whether we want to filter assemblies or namespaces, but let's go with the defaults here. Now let's save and run our build. Once the build finishes, TeamCity will display code coverage information. On the build summary, we can see some key metrics like coverage on classes, methods and statements. We can also drill down into the full report. 
The full report contains a view on code coverage grouped by assembly. We can dig deeper and look at classes and even at source code, in which TeamCity will highlight covered and uncovered statements. Using .cover, we can verify the percentage of application code that is covered by unit tests. It's great to be able to run code coverage analysis on a developer machine, but by using the .cover console runner and the TeamCity integration, we can make it a part of our continuous integration story.